Elon announces he's going to send an uncrewed mission to Mars. He and I got into a little dust up in recent weeks. Consider that he hasn't done anything that NASA hasn't already done. The, the actual space <laughs> frontier is still held by NASA. And I, I was surprised to see some headlines because they, it largely misrepresented what I actually said publicly. Didn't so much misrepresent it, but it made more of it than I did. Maybe because they felt it could serve as good clickbait. Let's go back a few years when Elon and SpaceX was commissioned by NASA to bring cargo to the space station. That was headlines. Oh my gosh, opening a new frontier in space, a, a, a private enterprise, will they lead the way? And there were big headlines, and I thought, what, what? He's taking cargo to the space station, something NASA's been doing for decades. So now private enterprise is gonna do it. How that fact could turn into, oh my gosh, private enterprise is gonna lead the way. I, I didn't see how one connects to the other. Here's my point. The history of really expensive things ever happening in civilization has in essentially every case been led geopolitically by nations. Nations lead expensive projects. And when the cost of these projects are understood, the risks are quantified and the timeframes are established, then private enterprise comes in later to see if they can make a buck off of it. This perfectly normal and natural arc in the history of major funded projects. If the project does not require much money, then private enterprise could do it because it's a relatively low risk fitted into their R&D budget. Fine, I'm talking about major allocations of the resources of a civilization, like China building the Great Wall, like Europe building cathedrals uh, and churches, a huge investment of time, energy, and effort, like the Apollo program, the Manhattan Project. All of these are instigated by either governments and in the case of the cathedrals, praise of deity. The pyramids add those, praise of royalty. These are forces that dislodge money from the coffers of a civilization. So what is private enterprise been doing? They've been going back into orbit where NASA has been since 1962 with the launch of John Glenn. And so when does private enterprise lead us into space? I personally don't see that happening because to, if you wanna lead into space, what are you doing? You're going where no one has gone before. Often it involves risk that a company that has investors will not take unless there's very clear return on investment, ROI. Governments don't need a financial return on investment if they can get a geopolitical return on the investment. This is how power is established, has been ever been established in the world, for example. Private enterprise has been doing things that NASA has been doing for the past six decades. By the way, they've been doing it for cheaper. I can say without hesitation, SpaceX has been advancing the engineering frontier of space exploration, especially with the spectacle of the returning of the first stage back to Earth so that you can reuse it. I've said this before, if you flew a, a Airbus A380 or a Boeing 747 to Europe from the United States, and, and when you landed, they shoved it off a cliff and rolled out another one, your trip to Europe would be really expensive. So reusability matters. So these are tremendous triumphs of SpaceX in this space, pun intended. <laughs> Can I think of it as a space frontier being pushed? I can't really do that. I can't think of it that way. I said that. Then I got interviewed, the, the press interviewed me, the in, it made it to India. Uh, you said SpaceX hasn't accomplished anything. No, I did not say that, okay? Again, that's clickbait. That's like creating a feud where there really wasn't one. Uh, I said that private enterprise will do what nations have done and they'll do it more cheaply. If there's an occasion for private enterprise to do something that nations have never done before, that's a very serious conversation in the funding room. 
venture capitalist. Uh, Elon, what do you want to do? Oh, I want to send astronauts to Mars. How much will it cost? A lot, possibly a trillion dollars. Is it dangerous? Yes. Will people die? Probably. What's the return on that investment? I, I can't think of one right now. That's a five minute meeting. So how would Elon get to send his rockets to Mars? From the, the, the playbook of the history of, ge of geopolitics. What'll happen? The United States decides we need to send astronauts to Mars one day, geopolitically, by whatever force is operating on us. And then NASA looks around and says, oh, you know, we don't have a rocket to do that. And then Elon says, I have a rocket, and rolls out his rocket to Mars. Then we ride a SpaceX rocket to Mars. That could easily happen. But I just want to make it clear, it's not a mission initiated by a private company. Because the money for that is not going to come from his earnings on anything else he does in space. It's going to come from taxpayers funding NASA's goals, inspired by the geopolitics of the world at that time. So I'm delighted to see that Elon at SpaceX has announced that in the coming years, they're going to send uncrewed rockets to Mars. These are vessels that are equipped to carry people, but you wouldn't send people first if you're still sort of getting the bugs out of the system. So that's great. That would be advancing a space frontier. You know why? No one has ever sent a rocket to Mars that could have carried people. That would be advancing a space frontier. I look forward to that. And I don't know enough details. Is he going to bring him back? You kind of need to do that if you're going to have people there, unless they signed up for a one-way trip. And Mars is not quite ready to receive people on a one-way trip. All right, you gotta wait for the terraforming for that to happen. Uh, you'd wanna bring them back. By the way, that round trip would take several years and a minimum energy transfer from Earth's orbit to Mars orbit takes just under a year to do that. Then if you want a minimum energy return, you gotta wait until Earth and Mars are properly configured once again in our respective orbits. And then you can take advantage of that configuration and then come back. So a full round trip is several years. So I look forward to this and see how that unfolds. Those are definitely the first steps. By the way, the current American program to return to the moon, it's called Artemis, has three planned missions. The first was an uncrewed mission to the moon. It went to the moon and came back, splashed down in the, in the ocean, good. Second is a crewed mission to the moon, but not land yet. Third would be a crewed mission to the moon where you land, right? incremental steps, just as Apollo had unfolded. That's one of the reasons why there were many Apollo missions. Each one was incrementally more ambitious than the previous one. So this is how space works. If you want to stay safe in the process, especially when it involves people, crew, astronauts, and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing what comes of that. Good luck, SpaceX. Godspeed to you.